Okay, this is uh, a demonstration using the old Game Mapper software. Uh, what I'm showing here is your uh, basically a two by two foot game table layout. And um, if this works, let's see if this is working now. Sometimes it doesn't work. I'm trying to connect to the camera and it's like, uh, doesn't seem to like the GoPro. So anyway, um, so what we're looking at here is basically the game table layout. And we didn't concern ourselves with replicating all the different shapes and possibilities for the roads and the rivers. Uh, and using the game mapper uh, software, we just drew it as we would expect to see it on the game table. So uh, what I'm saying is in this region right here, you would see that this is comprised of a part uh, that's put on the game table that's a fork in the river. And it enters, or it has three exit points. It would be highly unlikely for you to see a river or creek with exit uh, three entry points this close. So it's more likely you would either see a bend, which is normal, like up here, or a fork like this. Uh, only in regions of the, the bayous and so on would you see complicated forks and so on and branches uh, of, of rivers uh, and streams. And here we see again the same thing with the roads. They are just drawn in and without trying to worry about the exact shape. Also, uh, it should be noted that these roads are technically a little too thin for what we actually have on the game table. Um, they should be a little thicker. Uh, actually, probably twice that thick. Uh, and we can do that uh, just by going to, and again, sorry, the, the software is no longer available. We, we, we can always draw maps for you uh, if you like, uh, and we can send them to you as JPEGs or whatever kind of file. But um, in, in modifying the uh, center line, for instance, we could go to a, something like 12, I think it's 12 points. Uh, and even that is a little bit... Uh, uh, not enough. So we, let's go to a 24, double that size. And that's about the right size right there for the road. Uh, so it's 24 and whatever it was before, uh, six is definitely not right. So let's go to 24 and decrease the thickness of the line um, to three. So it's a little bit uh, more manageable. Also, what you'll notice here is how it changes, um, how the roads, uh, the artwork itself changes when you do this. Uh, it's an interesting uh, nuance of the software that it creates an open-ended area here so you can create a intersection uh, and not worry too much about how those lines look. Uh, let's go and do this one here. So it's uh, 3 and 24. It's amazing how it's interesting. Some of these things are divisors of 8 and, and 12. So there's more appropriate. That's more appropriate. And I keep grabbing this. It's okay. Sometimes that happens. So you just got to look for the little node when it appears. And that will tell you when to grab it. So here what you're seeing is the transition, as we talked about, from the non-traditional hexagon grid layout, which is to say the uh, road itself is uh, 
moving along the, the tops of these hexes and the middles of other hexes. This is common to other uh, board games like, I think it's SPI that does this. Avalon Hill, I believe, only ever traveled on the flats of the hexes. For the roads, I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but I'll show you an example. Here's how you can create a road that doesn't go in the split this joining point of these two hexes. The way you do that is you simply make it go right here. Now that is another option but traditionally we go ahead and transition from the flat to flat layout to the flat to edge layout. We'll call it that flat to edge. Here's a edge to flat. So this is going from flat to flat to flat and then it transitions to edge to edge to edge all the way. That's what we were talking about earlier and that's why I wanted to demonstrate. The other thing I wanted to demonstrate here was the contours around our hexagon hills. Why do we keep harping about this? Well here's why. Visually as you can see right now this is the reason why we talk about this. The hill hexes which are represented here have a a slope that protrudes into the neighboring hex and in some cases a very gentle slope will protrude even further. But we don't want to have such a long uh, space between one elevation uh, out here which would be near zero to this next elevation and so on and so on. Remember these are series of four uh, sheets of foamies which are six millimeter each which is 24 millimeters almost an inch tall and therefore uh, as we said we went to the one to one and a half inch tall trees and um, that is because the look of the game is important and let me see if I can grab this another thing um, so this is the reason why we've drawn this contour so you can see that the actual hexagon hill has an another layer under and another layer and another layer to reach that one inch height and here we have a representation of the cornfields. So this is an artwork created in Game Mapper that we just created and put it in as a BMP. And here we see forest hexes that are in the same hex as the rivers. The fields that you're looking at here are the legal hills. I'm sorry, legal fields. And why do we say it that way? We say it that way because we can't have a sustainability platform. We can't have a game that's sustainable and rep repeatable. Uh, unless we designate certain legitimate uh, legal shapes, and this is one of them. This is a four hex size uh, field, but look how it sits. You don't see four hexes, right? Because the orientation of the hexagons obviously doesn't conform to the orientation of the field. That's just a nuance. This is the reason why we started to create, and still can, hill or fields that occupy four hexes like this. So there's, sorry. Here's a hex. All right, I'll just copy paste. Here's a hex with another hex next to it. And then another hex like this, and then another hex like this, and this is the this is explaining to you why we did it that way. It was so that no matter where you put the field, the hexagon grid is in there, and it's always the same. And you don't have to do this, but we believe this is the smart thing to do when it comes to knowing where to put your troops inside these fields. Okay. That may not be such a big deal. You might say, well, what difference does it make? They're in the field, they're in the field. Well, you see, sometimes it depends uh, what, you know, what they're facing is. And you need to have this legislated so that it's always the same. Granted, it doesn't look very attractive, but on the artwork on the game table, these lines are very faint. But that is the intention. Uh, that's the reason why we started to draw the artwork of the, well, let me grab it now. There we go. We started to draw the artwork of the fields on cardstock 
uh, with a pattern of a plowed field, for instance, with the four hexes in that arrangement we just saw. So they're always the same. Well, then you say, well, what about lines, uh, rows of fence, wall, uh, bush? Well, that's another thing. Now, we always want to say you can do what you want. But the truth of the matter is uh, the tendency to get carried away is always there. For instance, on a World War II battlefield, you may have in some locations tons and tons of, of hedge like bocage. Uh, it'll be crazy. So where do you call, where do you draw the line? And I guess you can't. But then you say to yourself, how can another person replicate that game table on their setup and be exactly the same? Well, you can't. Unless you obey certain uh, restrictions, we'll have to call it that. Unless you, oh, unless you uh, uh, conform to a socialism type of game layout. And the reason for that, again, is obvious. So that every group, uh, club, can have a game table layout exactly the same as another club. And then they can broadcast online and share exactly what they're both doing at the same time. And you can't do that if you just let willy-nilly hedgerows and fences run everywhere. But again, getting back to the point of a simple straight line of fence, well, you simply have to consider where it is in relation to other pieces of terrain. So if there was a row of fence, you could say, well, just make sure that you've conformed to this layout, put your fence. And then if you put another fence um, in, in uh, offshoot, a par uh, 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 parallel, no, uh, perpendicular, say that, okay, only or, or tr attempt to take your perpendicular fences from the corners in this particular layout, for instance. So go from corner to corner to corner to corner, and then, you know, edge to edge to edge, that kind of statement. And that will then allow the other players to see, oh, okay, I, I just simply have to connect these things to make it exactly the same as Club B over in, in England. Okay, or, or you could say, look, 13 and 14 and 5 is a row of fence. 5, uh, 15, and, and 26 is a row of fence. And that's all you have to do. Just say it's encumbered, 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 encumbered. And then the other fence, maybe there isn't anymore. There's just those three, uh, six. One, one, two, three, four, five hexes have a fence in them. That way, it doesn't matter what the orientation is. It's a fence hex. This only becomes complicated, of course, when you have other pieces of terrain. So bear that in mind. Anyway, uh, there you see it. That's what we're trying to do and are explaining why we're doing things. And we're using Game Mapper to do it. Sorry you can't get the software anymore. It's not available. Uh, I know. I wish it was, but it isn't. Um, but uh, these hexes are numbered, and this is a way for a two-foot-by-two-foot two, a two foot by two foot game table. You can refer to the, uh, if you're just playing with one person running the game, then a, a person can give an instruction to move from hex, say, 3 to uh, 15, and then from 15 to 46. So that's the kind of instruction you can give. That's why it's good to have these numbered hexes. Over here, just to end this session, uh, you can see that I've got the light blue, cyan blue for the Union, in this case, uh, American Civil War, and red for the Confederacy. Now, why isn't this blue the same as that blue? Well, obviously, okay? So we, uh, this blue is nice, but uh, we need to have uh, this cyan blue uh, to make it obvious. And then you can see also when I zoom in, the name of the unit uh, is shown. Um, sorry, it's off screen. Anyway, you get the idea. So there's the name of the unit, and this one just doesn't happen to have one.